The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Tuesday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 906 AM. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. Quite a day to the downside yesterday. Uh, market clawing back some of the losses to kick off the trading. We look at the S&P right now. We're up 17 points. You look where we were yesterday. Lows intraday before you finished with a little bit of positive action. I mean, well off the lows we had yesterday, whether it was at about lows just prior to noon, the actual low yesterday, you're talking about 42.67. So you're 40, 40 points above that price level. We hit that price at one o'clock yesterday afternoon. You also came down at about nine o'clock last night. Things looking a little bit dire, but since then, look where we are. We're up about 40 points off of the lows in the S&P. We're positive by four tenths percent. You look where we were yesterday, you're talking about well, basically in the middle of the range from that full sell sell off that began right at the market open tech stocks are what started things yesterday trading lower in a big way they led on the way down you get the nasdaq 100 up three tenths percent this morning yesterday morning at about this time 14,735. you trade down to 14 1,367. So as you see, technically on the session, you're positive by 40 points on the futures, but you're talking about positive by about 130 points from the lows we had yesterday afternoon. Last night, we were down at almost 14,400. Dow, right at 34,000 as we speak. Yesterday, you sell off quickly to about 33,700, just like the S&Ps. We hit that price level at 9 o'clock last night before trading higher. We got the Russell up about 8 points right now at 22.23. Bitcoin, back above 50,000. Quite a week for Bitcoin shaping up so far, 50,300. Crude catching a bid as well. <clears throat> OPEC holding strong uh, on their cuts. You got crude trading higher above 78 yesterday. We almost got a 79 print this morning, 78.88. The price of light, sweet crude. You jump to gold, pulling back today. We got gold down $13 at 17.53. Gold trading inverse with the market yesterday. Gold accelerates to 17.71. We get back almost all those gains though in gold and we jump to silver, negative 22 cents at 22.42. We gotta check out natural gas because that thing has been on fire. We hit 6.10 this morning. Taking a look at the daily on natural gas, you're talking about those are dailies. I mean, for a second, I said, is that a weekly? We got such large bars. No, they're not. But we got higher prices. I mean, the only thing above where we're trading at right now is that spike high we got last week, September 28th at 631. And we jumped to notes and bonds. A little bit of lower price and higher yield. Tech, checking out the yield. We're sitting right at 1.51% right now. You take a look at just going back a 10-day, 30-minute. You were down to 131.07. That's about a week ago. You made it a full point higher. You make it to a high Sunday night of 132.08. So more than a full point, you traded higher. And just like that, the trend is back to lower price and higher yield this morning, back above 1.5%. We jump over to the VIX volatility index. Quite a spike yesterday. We got a new normal in the VIX for the last week with a range above 21 with a higher boundary of about 25. You take a look at the daily on the VIX, you see that area. We haven't had an area of five to six days of spikes. I mean, look at the last spikes we've had, whether you just go back to August, right? I mean, it was almost one day spikes and we gave it all back, right? You had a spike in July, pretty similar action. Only two days in July, it spent above 20. Uh, we had a spike in June. Uh, what I'm pointing out is, this is a rally in the VIX that is persisting. When you look at, I mean, what day are we going back to? We're going back to September 20th, folks, that we really spiked above 20. You got below that level for three days. Just zooming in on this action, though, we're talking about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine out of the last 12 days, we've spent the better part of it above 20 on the VIX. We haven't seen a sustained rally in the VIX above 20 for nine out of 12 trading days, folks. That's pushing back almost three weeks. You got 10 trading days in a week. 
12 trading days. We're going back two and a half weeks for the better part. We've been above 20 in that volatility index with a lot of volatility in this market, uh, and the indices are showing it. All right, let's jump right into things. Where are we going to start off? Why don't we start off with Facebook? Quite a day for Facebook yesterday. You got a little bit of a pop. Facebook goes down, Instagram goes down, WhatsApp goes down, their messaging service as well, all their servers going down. You got Facebook, really amazing that that is on the heels of, uh, I was talking about yesterday, early on this program, 24 hours ago, the 60 Minutes story with the whistleblower out there talking about uh, Facebook, the harm they're doing, the internal documents, encouraging people. If you haven't seen it, folks, check it out, 60 Minutes, it was Sunday night, the Facebook whistleblower, it's worth watching. Uh, that happened Sunday night, probably one of the less fortunate times that you could have a pile on, as in then the company's whole website goes down the next day. They were gonna pay a price probably yesterday anyway, um, because once it becomes real, folks, more so, right, you have, a, you have a face, you have a person, they're talking to you, they're telling you about what they saw in this interview internally, they're telling about what you saw even versus other social media companies compared what Facebook is doing and how bad they're acting compared to other social media companies was the point they were making. When you see that in the flesh, it's a different story than just reading a journal article um, about how bad it is. It shouldn't be the case that it takes a person's face and, and that raw emotion to make it count. Facebook would have been down lower yesterday anyway, is my opinion, and they really piled on when you think about it, though. Now, jumping around, so we're up about two bucks. We're back to 328. Facebook was already pulling back from the tie of 384. Uh, you jump to some of uh, the discussion. So it seems to be a router issue that they were doing uh, some type of an upgrade. Uh, disruption to network traffic had a cascading effect on the way our data centers communicate, bringing our services to a halt, I would say so. Uh, network configuration, uh, no evidence that user data was compromised. Uh, the technical issue took Facebook's core network, its photo app, Instagram, uh, WhatsApp, all offline. I mean, they couldn't even get into the Facebook building, folks, which was pretty remarkable. Now, what's crazy is that you think about, if you've ever seen um, the Facebook movie that they go into, and, and I'm going to pull up, what is the name of that movie? The Social Network, right? Uh, there's a time very early on in Facebook's development, at least portrayed in the movie, and I know they took some liberties, uh, where they don't pay a bill. Facebook's uh, Zuckerberg's partner doesn't pay a bill, and, and Zuckerberg flips out, and he says, you know, do you understand that you, you, you push this site down one day, and we could lose everything we've built? Uh, and already, some of the numbers in terms of people in terms of downloading, I'm gonna pull the article up later this week. I got, uh, is this the one? Yes, it is, okay. So millions flocked to Signal and Telegram after Facebook outage, and you can see how fragile a company like this is. I mean, if you ever had something, the, the fact that a company like that could go down for five or six hours, they're having some meetings this morning saying, how do we prevent this in the future? Because if you can go down for five or six hours, what's present preventing it from going down for a day or two? And if you go down for a day or two, what if somebody's uh, habit of checking Facebook, what if their addiction to being on Facebook, Instagram, right? What if that addiction gives a little bit of a glimpse of what else is out there on the internet, like Signal, like Telegram? You're talking about millions of people downloading Signal. Um, Twitter was still out there. People were talking about it, of course. Um, you have Telegram, whose functionality closely mirrors WhatsApp. How about surging 55 places to the top of the US iPhone download chart? That's an opportunity they just let their competitors get. Not a big deal in the grand scheme, but you can see how delicate that relationship is. Stay tuned, folks. We'll come back with our man, Kevin Hicks. We'll be right back. Golden ratios give shape to everything in our world, represented in the Fibonacci sequence. These special numbers define the patterns that make up our universe. Not even markets can escape the omnipotence of these ratios. Larry Pesavento is a 45-year market veteran who has published nearly a dozen books on the powerful patterns we find in nature and their relationships with the ever-elusive markets. Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, will teach you to harness the power of these natural golden ratios in order to create successful trades. Fibonacci 24-7 is designed to teach the tools you need to identify and act on these undeniable and reoccurring patterns. 
Sign up for Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, and you will also receive free access to his trading webinar, Trading Strong, Trending Markets. Try out Larry's newsletter risk-free. All of TFNN's newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. S&P's right now positive by 15 points. We got the NASDAQ 100 positive by 43, Dow positive by 127. We got about 12 minutes to go until the opening bell. All the markets climb back some of the losses from yesterday. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Folks, every trading day, 11 a.m. No, excuse me, 12 a.m. Eastern time. 12 a.m. Eastern time. I got to get it now. Fast Market with Kevin Hinks and Tom White. A new outstanding program kicked off in a new time on Monday, 12 o'clock. Larry in the 11 o'clock slot at, right now. Uh, Kevin Higgs, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Yeah, first day, new new time slot, uh, new show, new people on. So a lot of the same ideas, though we're still trading and, and reacting to what the market's doing and showing people our Check our checklist, basically, for how we choose a trade. And like, like I said, you yesterday we traded pepsico ahead of their earnings historically a name that doesn't move a lot after earnings we put on a range bound trade and so far tommy it's sitting right in the middle of our range so uh so far so good in pepsico and pretty cool kevin and listen anytime i think about pepsi man i think about you and i think about you saying hey historically we never know what's going to happen any given quarter kevin but historically um very low volatile stock when they come out with their earnings now were you a market maker in pepsi is that what it was i yeah. refreshed my memory yeah. it was nothing in the like GE some pit at the cboe so i traded um and i was the specialist in pepsico for 20 years cool uh and i had their numbers up i was checking them out uh just even before i was going to chat with you figuring i was listening to the program yesterday with range bound trade as you were talking about some strong numbers here from pepsi man um they beat on earnings they beat on revenue uh net sales 11.6 percent rising i mean just staggering numbers in a big way what they also came out with kevin which i thought was interesting is that more price hikes could be on the way says the cfo i'm reading the headline out there as well uh of course that transitory inflation debate uh persists pepsi you're seeing it but higher this morning up to about 151. uh so we got pepsi out yesterday i know we have some companies trickling out to start uh this week kevin of course we got a lot going on we get non-farm payrolls coming up on friday uh as a 
trader approaching, you know, a pretty volatile market. I was talking about in the first segment of the show. We got a VIX, Kevin, that's been above 20 for nine out of the last 12 days. You're talking about two and a half weeks now that we've had a pretty sustained volatility trend right now in this market as we come into a pretty important non-farm payrolls number. What do you look for in that VIX as we come into maybe Friday's non-farm payroll number with the VIX sitting right now at 22 and change? Yeah, I think there's some volatility because of, remember last September 3rd, there was a pretty big miss on the non-farm payrolls number. And I think you can connect the dots to where this market got choppy. Now, there, I'm sure there was other reasons, but it certainly started on that day that we had a pretty substantial miss in non-farm payrolls. So hopefully with the benefits uh, expiring on September 6th, the people are starting to move off the sidelines and into some of these jobs. So the expectations are now for about 475,000 jobs. Frankly, Tommy, between you and I, that seems a little low based, based yeah. on that was the extent of the miss from last month. And that's all they're expecting for this job. So uh, this could be a, an interesting one to set up if those people are starting to come off the sidelines here. We'll, we'll you know, we'll see. The numbers from COVID are starting to turn positive here in terms of lower net cases and l lower hospitalization. So you know, we'll see if this market is starting to uh, open up with, with more people coming off the sidelines and entering the labor force, Tommy. It is pretty cool, all the variables in play, man, and it is great just from humanity. Cases look like they're going down. Florida had a big spike. I'm sure most are aware, very much going down, which is great to hear, especially being in Florida. And uh, yeah, I got the S&P futures up on the Thinkorswim platform. September 3rd, you got an all-time high, which is ironic. You hit the actual all-time high, 45.49. We're down almost 250 points from that price level. And I agree, Kevin, on the jobs number expectation. What happened in the in the summer months to to the million dollar um, excuse me million jobs number right remember there's a lot of talk a million maybe was the number we had some misses everything was a little delayed delta variant kicked up so it was a little pushed back uh it seems like expectations have been paired a bit and the market not really reacting too much when you think we're still sitting at a pretty decent to say the least 4306 in the s ps as we've pushed back this recovery um expectations looming though for friday and rightfully so with the vix sitting at 22 uh with a with a few equities in play kevin do you guys have any idea i know you had a great program yesterday you were talking about hypotheticals you were setting up trades uh do you guys have any idea what you're going to be talking about today coming up at uh noon eastern time Absolutely. Like Folio is going to do presentation on Constellation Brands. So we're going Love to it. trade the liquor business. They have earnings coming out tomorrow morning before the open. And then we're going to start getting our shopping list out, Tommy, and look at names that have been beat up. Amazon and Microsoft, uh, two names that were down hard yesterday. And frankly, Amazon is down about 15% off its highs. So uh, we're going to start looking at these names, putting on positions, setting you up for the future ahead of uh, third quarter earnings, Tommy. That's awesome. Constellation, I, I, I love that company. I have some of that company in my retirement. Um, they have some exposure to cannabis in there, but talking about strong, strong brands, um, wine, beer, right? Modelo, Corona, Kim Crawford, uh, pumping a little bit. I'm a little biased, folks, but I'll be watching that. And I really look forward to that conversation about these tech companies, Kevin, because it's really interesting. You start getting in a long term basis the type of pullbacks you have, right? For some investors, and I love the short term trading you guys do with options, but looking at things a little bit longer, when you start getting these types of pullbacks in the market, uh, you can't help but be a little attractive. I mean, looking at Amazon, we're back to prices, Kevin, that we were trading at. Jeez, I got to go back. You're talking about 15, 16 months ago, the same exact price on Amazon shares. I imagine that company's been doing pretty well over the last year, year and a quarter. They got some rising costs, of course. And it makes me think about what you guys talked about last week, I think it was, with FedEx, because that's one of the companies, just same situation. Uh, if you're in for the long haul, man, you're looking at a company in FedEx. I think we have a market cap, something like 50 or $60 billion right now. Uh, you pull back from 319 to 217. Pretty cool how you get some pullbacks in some of these equities. And I'd say they're pretty strong equities in the long run. But, man, you got some, some price pullbacks in a big way. Microsoft sitting at 283 from 305. Uh, so far. Well, Kevin, we look forward to the program at the new time of noon Eastern time with you and Tom Whiteman. We'll be watching today. We look forward to it and we appreciate the conversation as always. Have a great day, Tommy. Thanks. You too, Kevin. Take care. Folks, tune in. They got a new program. It's Kevin. It's Tom White. 
They're walking you through those trade setups, a new time, 12 noon Eastern time, every trading day. I encourage you to check it out, Fast Market on the TD Ameritrade Network. And you see, as he's talking about now, Constellation, uh, as I said, I do have some Constellation. I talked about it a little bit yesterday, actually. Uh, we're right at the 382, 382 for Constellation. You back it up to the run this had going back about a year ago, right, when things really took off, when we start to get the COVID vaccine efficacy, we get over the uh, election volatility, we spike from about 160 to 244. Constellation, you've been skipping around this 212 area for the better part of almost three months. This is a weekly we're talking about here. You're coming into their earnings, you pull up the Analyze tab, we're talking about a $7.63 move expected. Not that big of a move expected for their earnings. You want weekly action all the way through Friday. You're talking about nine dollars and 43 cents we'll call it almost ten dollars you're talking about a four to five percent move priced into their options uh for their earnings coming out tomorrow all right folks stay tuned we got the s p's up by 15 as i said right we got non-farm payrolls and for all intents and purposes we're almost sitting at all-time highs a little bit of a pullback over the last four weeks since that september 3rd number but we got a new number on friday stay tuned folks we'll be right back for the open Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
All right, folks, welcome back. We got markets open. We got the S&Ps up by 18 points right now. That's a weekly. Let's put it back on a daily for the full run that we've had. Quite the acceleration up to highs of 45, 49. Keeping in mind, that was the Friday for September when we got the numbers for August non-farm payrolls. We come into that Friday's number this Friday for the month of September non-farm payrolls. All things considered, chopping around it relatively near highs. But man, you say relatively near highs, but just like that, we gave up three months of gains in a pretty quick instant. In one month, we're back to 4308 in the S&P. You take a look at the NASDAQ 100. You look at the run that we've had since May. You were under 13,000. You make it to 15,708. We've given back almost half of those gains from May just like that. Uh, we'll see. We're a minute into the open. We got markets in positive territory. Russell giving it back, though, pretty quickly. You put a 15-minute on that chart. There's your drop off right on the opening bell. We're down about giving back most of the gains. You have the S&P up 17 tech stocks in the positive as well. Let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks. They were the first stocks to accelerate lower yesterday. We're catching a little bit of a bid today. You have Amazon up by half a percent. You got Microsoft shares up eight tenths percent. Google shares up by six tenths. Let's check out Facebook up a percent right now to 329.54. Pepsi out with their numbers yesterday up about eight tenths percent, up a dollar and change to 151.38. Now getting into Pepsi's numbers because it's interesting when um, you talk about you know strong numbers in a big way, organic growth a little bit suspect in these numbers here. Pepsi's North America organic growth revenue seven percent for the quarter. Their organic sales have risen 10% on a two-year basis, so a little bit of a slowdown there of organic growth. Growth has moderated since bouncing back 21% in the prior quarter. You got a lot of variants here with COVID. Company said it's a double-digit net revenue growth for its food services business, which includes sales to restaurants, stadiums, and college campuses. That would make sense as the economy op opens back up. Frito-Lay saw its organic revenue increase by 5%. It's amazing the organic revenue growth these big companies get over and over. Uh, as consumers maintain many of their pandemic snacking habits, Quaker Food North America, the, that's been the most challenge of Pepsi's business units, organic revenue increased by 1%. All right. Now I'm going to jump to what they were talking about in terms of higher prices. You have the CFO, Hugh Johnston, expecting another round of price hikes in the company's snacks and beverages early next year. Now, when they're buying supplies to make their products, they have about a six to nine month lead time in here. The forward buying can only do so much for us. What it does is buy us about six to nine months of room. Um, they buy commodities and materials it needs to months in advance, but those contracts don't help the company escape inflation. Of course they don't. Eventually it's gonna catch up to everybody, folks. Um, <clears throat> the wiggle room allows the company retailers to ease consumers into the higher prices, saving them from the sticker shock. The thing to take from this, folks, is those prices are never going back down. You start hiking a bag of Frito-Lay potato chips, those prices are not going back down a year. They are going up, period. End of sentence, hard stop. Uh, and those costs are going to matter to consumers and to businesses. During the third quarter, Pepsi saw higher costs tied to inflation for labor, commodities, and transportation, particularly for the Quaker Food North America business unit. The net income fell 3%, but revenue grew 11.6%. I mean, folks, that would be like if you were taking in a million dollars for a business, okay, and let's just say you were making 100 grand, okay? Well, next year you take in 1.11 million of revenue and you make less money. You make 97 grand, right? You increase revenue by 10 plus percent, 11.6 to be exact, and you can't even keep up the same net income that you were making on that revenue number. Pay attention to that because I think it's going to be a persisting theme as we march on. We'll keep on that theme and we'll jump to Target. Target. Now, Target already has a $15 minimum wage and they are adding to that $2 an hour extra for peak days of holiday season. So they're talking about whether it's Saturdays and Sundays in the final weeks before Christmas, uh, whether they're talking about the days right around the holiday season, peak days during the holiday season, such as those Saturdays and Sundays around it. 
Uh, extra pay will go to store employees and service center employees who work on Saturdays and Sundays from November 20th to December 19th or Christmas Eve or the day after Christmas. Select headquarters employees also qualify, send their announcement. They already have a minimum wage of $15. I mean, think about it, right? So you got a minimum wage of 15. Now you're pushing 15 to 17 as the bottom number for Target employees. It's a big number that they're going to have to be paying. Target, you know, you're talking about a, a fantastic company. They have outstanding social sentiment in terms of people and their affinity for Target. Uh, not quite sure that trend line makes sense anymore as we're deviating above and below. Nonetheless, though, you traded from a year ago. You're talking about 120 up to 267. We're back to 227 from the run we've had since March. Let's just see what kind of Fibonacci retracement we're dealing with here because these costs are going to matter, folks. So 50% of that run from March will be 216. A 618 would bring it back to 204. Right now, Target is a... I want to see what kind of company we're talking about market-wise. You pull up the fundamentals for a market capitalization, $111 billion market capitalization. You take a look at Walmart, for instance. Walmart, you're talking about more than double that, more than triple that, $381 billion, the market cap for Walmart. Uh, you look at Amazon, yeah, what are we pushing? $1.6, $1.7 trillion? $1.6 trillion for Amazon. All right, what else we got going on? Jumping down the line to some of the equities that are moving today. Lordstown Motors, electrics, keeping with electric, downgraded to underweight from equal weight at Morgan Stanley. Recent announcement sale of Lordstown's Ohio plant to Foxconn values the plant at less than a fifth of prior estimates. Did you hear that one, folks? A fifth. That's 20% of prior estimates when they unload that thing. You're down 10% on this equity. Be careful with all these equities, folks. Look at this chart. Right, very unfortunate that a lot of people got caught at these highs. I mean, look at some of the volume. Now that's a weekly. Let's put it on a full daily, but go back until the run we had. Um, you're talking about at these levels. I mean, some days you were doing 41 million shares back in January. At the highs, you're pushing 10 million, 15 million shares, et cetera. Even when you had the recent run up in June, you know, you're talking about 40 million shares done on June 8th when they were dealing with some harsh news. But, geez, that's more than double the price you were trading at right now, folks. Even if you bought in at the low of that day of 1026 and you've lost half your investment, if you had any type of margin, you've lost it all. The last few days, it's really sold off. Um, some of these companies sell the story in the long run. There's always going to be the Teslas that make out like bandits and really are the success story they tell them to, to be. But even Tesla came really close to failing and was on the verge many times. Uh, Pepsi's out with their numbers as they talk about. Facebook is out with their uh, number. Uh, excuse me, not out with their numbers, but back online. Now, Facebook, uh, they got a hearing starting at 10 o'clock today. So you'll get a flow of information on Facebook. Jumping back to what I was talking about real quickly in terms of um, how delicate the relationship they have with consumers is. I encourage everybody to give a little break to Facebook at times, folks. But even you had Jack Dorsey in front of Twitter, um, Twitter CEO, of course. Now, he's got a self-interest in there. Um, but you can see how Signal is what's up. He puts the link up there. You have Edward Snowden. He's about Signal saying that it's just, you know, maybe this is a, a reminder that you and your friends should probably be using a more private, nonprofit alternative like Signal app anyway, besides WhatsApp. It's free. It takes 30 seconds to download to switch. Facebook's down. I mean, Facebook's got, what, 2.6 billion people. So if you lose a few million, not the end of the world, but they could lose a few million just because of yesterday, which is interesting. Not many companies are so delicate with their consumers. We'll talk a little bit more when we get back. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today.
the technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back right now, folks. We got the S&Ps holding on to the gains. We're up 13 points. We've given it up a little bit, though. We got some volatility on the open right now. These are five-minute bars. Let's put it on a minute so you can see the flow of action since we opened. We opened at about 4306. We're above 4314. We're down to below 4300. Briefly, market. A little bit volatile to kick things off. We get the Russell in the negative right now. You got Bitcoin above 50,000. Gold at 1755. Crude holding strong at 7870 right now. Remarkable. A crude. Put that on a minute. Uh, all upward action so far this morning on that crude contract. There's your 15 minute to see the action for the last five days. Okay. Jumping around to other stories out there. So the Fed's internal watchdog, they're going to open a review into trading activity. The move follows revelations about unusual transactions is how bloomberg puts it in 2020 <clears throat> now hopefully they do put something in place where this at least does not happen again uh at a minimum because you need confidence in the federal reserve folks that they are acting in the best interest of our country and our economy and not in the best interest of the pocketbooks of the governors themselves uh the one i want to highlight here is that they talk about um, Clarida. Now, this is the article that came out, I believe it was last Friday, that Clarida traded into stocks on the eve of Powell pandemic statement. That was February 27th, okay? Clarida's forms, uh, he traded between 1 million and 5 million. Now, this was known last week, all right? I'm, I'm jumping back between two different articles here in terms of what they're dealing with. Um, Clarida's 2020 financial disclosures show he traded between 1 million and 5 million out of a bond fund and into stock funds one day before Powell issued a statement flagging possible policy action as the pandemic worsened. So this report here is the article I'm referencing here, okay? He shifted the funds out of a PIMCO bond fund on February 27th and on the same day buying the PIMCO Stocks Plus Fund and the iShares MCSI USA Minval Factor Exchange Traded Fund. Lots of words there. Uh, and a similar dollar ranges. So he traded out bonds for stocks on the 27th. OK, now the market still had a long way to go in terms of where they were going. But you wouldn't have known that at the time. We really got to back things up to go all the way back to the beginning. February 27th is the first sell off. Things looked really bad when the S&P sold off from I have to chuckle right from 3400 to about 
3,000. Now, I'm just going to zoom in on these few months around the pandemic to give you a, a, a quick representation. So there is the 27th. Here is the 28th when Powell has a statement. Okay, the second or the third is when they come in and cut rates by a half a point. The Fed announced a half percentage point rate cut on March 3rd, following an emergency meeting of the Federal Open Market Committee. So imagine, you know that the next day, and I'm saying you know that the governor probably has an indication that the Fed's going to release a statement, talk about evolving risks to the economic activity, closely monitoring developments and their implications. I mean, that was the first time. You see that little reprieve there? That little reprieve in the market was exactly what this article is talking about. Okay, the Fed was going to come in. The market said maybe this will be enough. Okay, well, the market decided pretty quickly that the Fed was not going to be able to hold up a market during a pandemic, and you then proceeded to trade from three thousand down to almost twenty one seventy four. Not almost twenty one seventy four. Uh, now, there's a lot of debate and spinning in here, right? You have. The Fed, this is their, a spokesman from the Fed who's speaking on behalf of the Clarida. Okay, they're speaking on behalf of Clarida. It's important to know who they're speaking on whose behalf, saying their uh, transactions represent a pre planned balancing to his accounts. I mean, to have a pre planned balancing of millions of dollars the day before. And there was a quote in here I want to finish this up with. Okay, and this is from, not familiar, Andrew Levin, Dartmouth College professor, former special advisor to the Fed's board, okay? The pandemic was spreading quickly and the economic outlook was evolving rapidly. This was not the appropriate time for top Fed officials to be making multi-million dollar changes to their portfolios. Uh, the Fed should welcome an external review. I mean, that's the basic of it, folks. This is a once in a lifetime instance in terms of a rapidly folding pandemic. Unfortunately, it looks like it could kill upwards of 1 million Americans alone. And you have a Fed governor the day before they come out with statements only a few days within a week that they come out with a surprise half point cut uh, loading from bonds into stocks. Just not what you want to see. Even if there was nothing nefarious done, that's not what you would have done. If you're if you're really conducting yourself in the best interest of the reliability and confidence that the Fed should have, you would never be making those types of trades. And I'm putting the best spin possible on things, folks. I'm saying even if they were made as part in good faith, which I don't believe they were, even if they were made in good faith, you can't make them because they erode confidence in the Fed even by appearances. Sometimes you can't do things even because the appearance would be impropriety, okay, which is at a minimum what is going on here. I mean, on the eve of that statement, folks, okay, the week before, February 27th, you load from bond, stock, um, bonds into stocks. Uh, he was probably looking for a bigger bounce than we got. Uh, nonetheless, I mean, you back things up to notes in the same way. And we had quite the run when things really fall apart. I'm trying to find the 27th. Yeah, there was no real pause in the tenure there at all as things just fell apart. But nobody envisioned at that time, folks, that the S&Ps were going to trade down to 2174. Okay? I remember even myself thinking, man, we just got a 10-15% haircut in no time right now on the S&Ps. And yeah, we all got it back by about May. So it was a short-lived spike. But now we want to see hopefully something comes about of that investigation. All right, what else we got going on? Let's jump down the line for stocks making moves. Uh, Albertsons, operator shares fell 4%. BM Capital downgraded the stock to underperform a market firm. How about increasing wage costs and more price-sensitive consumer environment? It's going to be a common theme, folks, especially for a company like that where you're talking about being in uh, consumer-facing goods, where you're dealing with rising costs, rising inflations. There's Albertsons. You're down 2.8% today, but you're actually catching a little bit of a pop off the lows we had of that company. Just out of curiosity, a company like Procter & Gamble, uh, up half a percent today. They may deal with some woes as well. Now, this is a five-year daily. Just taking a look at this year. Where have we been? You're up to 147. You're at 139 right now. Let's take a look at Nike. Nike catching a little bit of a pop after pulling back pretty harsh from 174 down to 145 recently. Take a look at Constellation with their numbers coming up down about seven tenths percent leading into that numbers. Let's take a look at some of the cannabis, cannabis stocks. Uh, yeah, they're catching a bounce, but man, these things have been dead in a big way. Let's put it just back to the last year. I mean, geez, we're right back to these lows. Maybe that's the area, uh, but we're actually below these lows. The low, when you look where we were in September of last year, maybe high 13s to low 14s, was sitting yesterday as low as 12.86 on canopy. 
all, all of them. Oh, Tilray, come on. Uh, 1095, but look where we are. Same thing. This thing, the chart's just taking forever. Uh, I find a no bid. You know, eventually they may take off, but man, this market, the cannabis sector, not paying attention just yet. Let's jump to airlines, see how they're trading after having quite a nice uh, pop in the last uh, two, three weeks or so. You got American up a bit, Delta shares up a bit with the market, Boeing shares, let's check it out, basically at about 10%, excuse me, tenth of a percent. Uh, Boeing, interesting, skipping along that bottom line of that trend line, coming off the lows of $89 back in last March. And we get the uh, all the markets in the green right now, folks. S&P's positive by 21, tech stocks positive by more than 100, the Dow positive by 141, Russell positive by eight. Stay tuned, folks, we'll be right back to finish up the show. I'll be back in three minutes. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Markets can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, and you too can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in the markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave! Sign up for the opening call risk-free today. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First mortgage? The Tiger First mortgage program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First mortgage program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps catching a bid. We're at basically session highs right now, up 26 points. NASDAQ 100 up 120 points. Dow up 173. I'm going to jump to an article up here they got on Bloomberg, Mr. Ken Griffin of Citadel. He says young people are making a grave mistake, stake working from home. I disagree to a certain degree. Uh, there's nothing like human interaction, folks. Uh, but you're going to see a lot of this with um, – Certain owners of businesses wanting all their workers to just be in their company's headquarters, even if it doesn't make sense. Now, his argument here is if you're early in your career, you're making a grave mistake not being at work. 
Um, it's incredibly difficult to have the managerial experiences and interpersonal experiences that you need to have to take your career forward in a work remotely environment. Of course, there's some validity to that, okay? I'm gonna push back on it though and say that in the future, folks, managing people, managing human capital, managing businesses in all capacities is gonna require a new skill set that is working remotely, okay? It's a different kind of managerial when you think about it, okay? You're gonna have people who have a lot more autonomy to run their own day, and managers are gonna have to figure out the best way to get the most productivity from people who aren't at a hand's reach from them. Now, there's nothing like a face-to-face -face conversation, folks, all right? I get that, I get it all. Um, but I imagine that that's a little bit of old school rhetoric saying, get everybody back to work. Citadel was one of the earliest that got him back there. Um, for the youngest members, he's gravely concerned that the loss of early career development opportunities is gonna cost dearly for the decades to come. Folks, that's just not the case of what's going on. If you talk to other CEOs, they live in fear of how we'll be publicly persecuted from delivering the straightforward message, it's time to go back to work. Not what I would agree with as well. Um, don't be afraid to push back on that type of rhetoric, folks. Uh, the world has changed. People have figured out that you can do your work from home, uh, and you're going to start to see a little bit of a pushback as companies just want those employees back regardless. All right, folks, thanks so much for tuning in. Stay tuned. we got Basil coming up at 10 o'clock. Remember, we got Larry at 11 o'clock Eastern time. Kevin Hicks, Fast Market, coming up at noon. They're going to be talking a little bit of Constellation. They'll be talking some Microsoft, some of the other companies who have pulled back as well. Steve Rhodes at 1, Dave White at 2 o'clock at the Power Trading Hour. Tom O'Brien, my dad, wraps it up live from 3 till 4. Thanks for starting your day with me, folks. Stay tuned for Basil. It's up right now.